Hey guys, uh, we are the Gem 5 GUI group. My name is Ahmed Farooqi. My name is Ram Shdeep Singh. My name is Rohit Damankar. My name is Shivam Desai. So uh, as I'm sure you're all familiar, Gem 5 is basically an open source project that lets users um, design and simulate computer architecture designs through uh, Python scripts. So yeah, as uh, Sean was just saying, in the current systems, you have to actually write the code yourself and you would have to define and generate the architectures uh, by yourself each time. And this is kind of a tedious development process uh, and the user flow can be a little complicated because you'd have to uh, define all the systems um, and create all like the, the derived objects yourself, like define the classes. So this can be difficult to develop and debug. And so some of the high level goals that we tried to achieve throughout this process was uh, being able to drag, drag and drop uh, sim objects into the canvas and being able to connect ports to each other with wires, um, being able to distinctly select objects and then modify their parameters, uh, being able to run simulations directly from the GUI uh, based on the configuration that was built, and lastly being able to save the configurations and load them up whenever required. So I'll talk a little bit about the front end components of our system. So the primary UI interactions involve dragging and dropping objects, selecting them, highlighting them, and uh, connecting objects together using wires. So we connect the objects using the line drawer class, and we have the graphic scene class, which uh, allows interactions between the different sim objects. Then we also have a couple of different view classes that make up the actual uh, GUI interface, such as the menu and the catalog view and attribute view. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the backend implementation in the GUI. So uh, most of these uh, objects that Rohit talked about that you can interact with are tightly coupled with the SIM objects, the SIM objects. Um, we cleverly called RUI versions, SYM objects. And essentially the way it works is anytime you instantiate an SYM object, it uh, holds a reference to the M5 SIM object, SIM object. And what this lets you do is when you modify the parameters, as you'll see in the demo, and when you wire up ports, this actually reflects in the backend implementation. And when you, actually, when you instantiate, it'll run pretty much exactly like a configuration script will run. Um, yeah, all of the elements that we have in the GUI sort of um, lend to the whole idea that we're trying to make everything easier. So in that, we connect the front end and the back end, um, I guess, seamlessly. So now we will go into a demo of our GUI. So running it from our directory using the gen5.opt command you will see this pop up, and from here we will talk about the some of the features and functionality our GUI has. Okay, first uh, we'll go over a little bit of a basic overview as well as some definitions of the terms we call things. So on the left-hand side of the GUI, uh, under name, you can see this is the section we defined as the catalog view. So each of these of the tree objects are essentially drop-downs that allow you to like select different sim objects. Then below that we have the attribute view, which will uh, allow you to select or view parameters of different objects. Then on the right side of this little dark gray area is the canvas where when you create objects, they'll be populated in this area. Then we also have a little menu at the top with features that will do specific things that we'll go into in a bit more detail later. So first off, for our catalog view, it holds all sim objects right now defined in Gem5, which we basically fetch from Gem5 using backend API calls. 
And like Rohit said, we can do drop downs. You can also search for any sim object up here. So if I wanted to do root, put it here. You also name each sim object. And just like how we said before, this contains a representation of the SIM object, basically a pointer, plus any port or param information based on what we change on the GUI. So Ravi went a little bit over, um, but this is the attribute view. Anytime you select an object, it brings up a table of all the attributes as well as their values. And essentially what the user will do is you will create an object and if it has any parameters that needs to be defined, then you'll set them. And this will basically let you configure the system as you, as you wish. So I'll talk a little bit about the wiring of components. So uh, Ravi, why don't you put in some objects with ports? Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Nice. So as you can see in these objects, they have these little uh, rectangles on the right side that will that are the port objects. So at the top left, beneath file, there is a little icon that lets you draw wires. So when you click on it, it changes the the cursor to a to a crosshair, which will indicate that you're drawing a wire. So to draw wires, you just draw from one port to another. And if you do it between two incompatible ports, you'll get this little error message that tells you that the ports are incompatible. So this will, I guess, help in development where if you don't know specifically that two ports aren't like compatible together, this GUI will, I guess, take care of that for you. Then when you draw a wire and successfully connect it, uh, show up here there we go and if we do this the slave uh, if you right click on the on the wire it should bring up a little context menu which you can use to inspect or delete the wire yeah that's that's essentially the wiring component of the system. Uh, if you all have noticed, anytime you select an object, uh, it does a little thing where it highlights. And this is kind of core to how we deal with user interaction. We have a context and um, an object is in context when it's either green or like dark red. Um, Essentially, what this allows us to do is do convenience things like select an object and then you can go to the catalog view and then select another object. And the default behavior is that it will ask to add, add the object as a child object and this makes it easier to add successive nested children. Um, <coughs> Finally, it's important to note that wiring is not affected by this context, so you could wire anything up to anything without worrying about which object you're currently selecting. And then I'll talk a little bit about the menu bar that you see on top. So uh, most of our features are actually encapsulated in that. So uh, in the first one, which is file, you'll have uh, a bunch of options that are related to actual configurations. So you, you can start a new file, you could save or save as the current configuration or open up a new one uh, that you're working on before. And then lastly, you have export and import, um, which allows you to export and import um, clusters of sim objects, which we will go into later on. Then the next tab is edit, which lets you do things like copy and paste, as well as undo and redo. Um, and then in view, you is basically uh, dealing with zooming, so you could zoom in out and then reset to the default zoom setting. Then you have 
run, which uh, involves your Gem5 interactions. So uh, first you'd go ahead and instantiate your sim objects. And then after doing so, um, the simulate button would become uh, enabled, which would click it and uh, simulate your configuration. Uh, then you have the debug tab, uh, which if you click on it, it would show you the debug view, which shows up on the right side. Um, and then lastly, you have the import uh, sim object option, which lets you import um, sim object files. So now we'll go over how you instantiate a model in this GUI. So let's open up a pre-made model for the effort of time. So if we do caches.ui, you'll see a pre-made model right here, which we've already saved and loaded up. And it has all of its params set, all the right ports set. So now that we have this system, we could press on root, click instantiate. It will give you a warning that you can't modify any of the values in this model once you instantiate. So we could save before. And right here, you will see that it instantiated and we can see that it creates the config file as well. So let me open it up real quick. One five out config.any. You see it produced the same system as the UI. Okay. Media and if you do simulate, it will produce the, it will basically do the simulation. And from there, so that's basically run in instantiate. You can't do anything to the model after you instantiate, obviously. So let's open up a new instance to go over to the debug functionality. So like as Shivam said before, if you press debug, you have the output to, uh, you have the option to either output your debug messages to a file, which you can change the name of it anytime. So you can make a .txt file or just log it to standard out, which will basically log it to the terminal over here. Plus you also have a bunch of uh, debug flags made for gen five, which you could set over here and search as well, which you can set and reset at any time. Now I'll talk about the importing and exporting uh, sub-objects that I talked about before. So if, Ravi, if you just want to do a simple root and then like pull an object. Yeah. Um, so basically this allows you to, uh, it's similar to saving and loading, but we're only talking about saving and loading specific components of the file. So in this case, if you have something like a root object with the whole object inside it, um, once we're done, so he clicks on the parent object and then uh, export as a UI object, and then you could name it whatever you want. So if you name it, and then uh, choose whatever file you want to export it into. So um, it gets exported into a .obj file, which uh, is in the JSON format. So if you close it and then open it up, open up a new instance. and then go to file and then import and click on the OBJ file that we use. It would import the same thing back in. And if you look at the catalog view, we have a new uh, tab called import objects, which lets you basically import it in over and over again, instead of having to go to the file. So lastly, we will go over importing uh, sim op user defined sim object. So I'll pull up a file here. So if I, if you were to make a fi file defining your own sim objects, you can import these into the GUI as well, as long as they are inherited from actual sim objects in Gem5. So running up to GUI again. We see the little import tab here. So if you do import, and go to caches.py. 
you can see it populates over here under the catalog view and you have the user defined sim objects. So, which you can name as well. So basically this will, this, you can put the, these in your models as well. And it should also save. So if I were to save this as test cache and then close it, and if I were to open it again, I wouldn't need to import the file, the cache.py file over again. I could just open, see the test cache over here. It will, it will pop up over here as well as, well as the user defined objects as well. So that's, those are our main functionalities of our GUI. And we would like to say thank you for giving us the time to basically present to all of you. And we would like to thank you or have a wonderful day, I guess. Thank you.